On May 18, 2020, it is 100 years since the birth of Karol Wojtyła, best known as the Pope and now Saint John Paul II. He was born in Wadowice, Poland in 1920 into a very religious family. In 1978, the then Cardinal Wojtyła was elected the first non-Italian Pope for nearly half a millennium. The Polish Pope appeared out of nowhere. Neither the believers nor the media or politicians knew him. And yet, he soon caught the attention of the whole world. To był papież, który miał wyeliminować, pomóc wyeliminować te wielkie podziały i, i, i doprowadzić Kościół do możliwości odczyszczenia, uporządkowania. His Holiness died in 2005 after 27 years of his pontificate. On the day of his death, people chanted Santo Subito, Saint to now, demanding his canonization, which took place in 2014. What were John Paul II's achievements? What did he do for the world and church? And how do people remember him? BBC World reveals the truth about the legacy of His Holiness ahead of his centennial anniversary. The Vatican St. Peter's Square. This is one of the many places where millions of Catholics come together to pray, to see the current Pope, to admire historical art and architecture, but also to visit graves of the former popes, including St. John Paul II. Today, thousands of people visit his tomb to pay the respect. For many, it is a very emotional moment. Why is that? Well, let's turn back time to the day when John Paul II appeared on that balcony and became the next pope. Abemus Papam. It's October 16th, 1978, 6 p.m. The white smoke is curling up from the Sistine Chapel, announcing that cardinals have elected a new pope. People gather in St. Peter's Square to welcome the new leader of the Catholic Church. Suddenly, they hear an international surname, Wojtyła. Wojtyła. Większość ludzi nie wiedział, kto to jest. Gdy wyszedł papież Jan Paweł II na balkon i pozdrowił ludzi, Ujął no od razu, bo był cały plac moc ludzi i od razu ludzie, to jest nasz papież. Anche non so se potrei bene spiegarmi nella vostra, la nostra lingua italiana, se mi sbaglio, se mi sbaglio mi corrigerete. Cardinal Karol Wojtyła becomes the first Polish Pope. He comes straight from the country that is ruled by anti-church communist government highly influenced by the Soviet Union. For many Poles like Lech Wałęsa, a former president of Poland, but also a leader and creator of anti-communist solidarity movement, the election of John Paul II meant the end of communism in Eastern Europe. Bez papieża, abyśmy nigdy się nie zorganizowali, Nigdy byśmy nie uwierzyli, że jest szansa, a więc komunizm by jeszcze długo, długo trwał i na, i na pewno końcówka byłaby krwawa. A więc papież przyspieszył działanie i uczynił końcówkę z walki z komunizmem bezkrwawą. Niewątpliwie on miał duży udział, że upadł marksizm, komunizm i, i to była największa rewolucja bez rozlewu krwi. Przekonanie, żywe słowo, argument, no i zwycięstwo nad marksizmem. Zniknął podział między wschodem a zachodem, żelazna kurtyna znikła. Poland has always been very religious country and communists had to acknowledge that. The communist Polish government desperately introduced the martial law. Its purpose was to control the nation, but people's faith and hunger for freedom pulled down the Iron Curtain forever. But it wasn't just one country dominated by the Marxist ideology which Jean Paul II tried to change. Cuba is another example. 
Surprisingly for Fidel Castro, a communist revolutionary leader of Cuba, John Paul II wasn't an enemy. He allowed him to come and meet with the public. Moreover, Fidel Castro was even impressed by John Paul II's point of view. Despite that, Cuba is still ruled by the communist leadership. What went wrong and why the Pope, regarded by some as one of the most influential popes in world history, couldn't change Cuba like he changed Poland. Papież pojechał na Kubę później, był lepiej przygotowany, bo miał polskie doświadczenia, ale tam nie było opozycji, która byłaby w stanie przejąć, poprowadzić dalej. W związku z tym komunizm trwa nadal. The pontificate of St. John Paul II was full of nuances and historical signs. Today, I'm here outside the great synagogue of Rome. And the reason for this is that John Paul II was the first leader of the Catholic Church who entered to synagogue to indicate that it's time to break boundaries between Christians and other religions. In 1986, Pope John Paul II was a guest in the Great Rome Synagogue. He announced to the world that Jews are Catholics' elder brothers. It was one of his priorities to build solid ties with the Jewish community in the hope of promoting Christian-Jewish recognition. In the year of 2000, Pope John Paul II went to Jerusalem to the Wailing Wall, the holiest place for Jewish people to pay respect but what do Jewish people think about John Paul II? John Paul II is a hero. John Paul II was able to explain to millions of people that they shouldn't be thinking negatively about us, but rather positively about us. Not only Jewish people were important for the Pope John Paul II. The dialogue between Christian and Muslim people was also significant. Dear Muslim friends, assalamu alaikum. During his visit to Damascus in Syria, for the first time ever, the head of Catholic Church takes the shoes off, steps into the mosque, and kisses Koran to express his peaceful intentions. He also urges joint forgiveness by Christians and Muslims, whose faiths have warred for centuries over territory and spiritual primacy. So I think um, what uh, Pope John Paul II did was very good uh, because he was an influential figure within um, the Christianity faith. In 1986, John Paul II organized the ecumenical event called Wall Day of Prayer, where 160 religious leaders positively responded to his invitation and gathered together in Assisi to pray to their God or gods in the name of peace. For the Pope John Paul II, the dialogue with different religions was very important. But what about issues that occurred inside the church, such as the pedophilia crisis among some priests around the world? Some media institutions criticized the Pope, saying that he failed to confront child sexual abuse among some priests around the world when they became widespread in the 1980s. But Cardinal Stanislaw Dziwisz condemns attempts to damage the status of his former superior. Oczywiście, za życia i po śmierci są pewne siły, które są negatywnie i wrogo ustosunkowane do niego. A tym się nie przejmujemy, bo postać Jana była, Jana Pawła II była tak przeźroczysta, tak klarowna, że, że te wszystkie zarzuty takie nieprawdziwe i kłamliwe upadają.
this white marble slab on St. Peter's Square indicates the place where Jean Paul II was shot and almost killed by the Turkish terrorist Mehmet Ali Yakca on May 13, 1981. For some people, this spot has a double meaning. It symbolizes Jean Paul II's mercy and forgiveness. Pamiętam wszystko, tak jakby to się dzisiaj stało. Przyjabyłem na tym dzipie razem z Łabierzem. Stałem za nim. Gdy tracił siły po przestrzeleniu i dużo krwi wypłynęło z niego, no to po prostu go podtrzymywałem i od razu zadecydowałem natychmiast yy, Udanie się do, do szpitala, bo na miejscu nie było nawet lekarza. Nikt się nie spodziewał czegoś podobnego. Ale ciekawe, w ambulansie, ja byłem w środku, jak jeszcze miał przytomność, bo potem stracił przytomność, modlił się i ofiarował to cierpienie za wielkie sprawy Kościoła i świata i przebaczył Zabachowcowi, chociaż jeszcze nie wiedział, kim, kim jest. No tak robią święci. Nie pytał się, kto to zrobił, ale już mu wtedy przebaczył. Jean Paul II's pontificate proved that he was an advocate for young people. He often spoke directly to them through his letters and talks, urging them to give their lives to God and never give up hope. To highlight the importance of youth in the church, John Paul II created the World Youth Day, a global meeting with the Pope celebrated every three years in different countries. In 1995, the World Youth Day in Philippines set a world record for the largest amount of people gathered for a single religious event with 5 million attendees. Miał takie odniesienie bardzo pozytywne do młodzieży. Szczere bardzo. Młodzież wiedziała, że on ich szanuje. No on wiedział, że młodzież szuka dobra, szczęścia, prawdy i starał się odpowiadać na ich pytania. John Paul II's successors, like Pope Benedict XVI or the current Pope Francis, continue celebrating the World Youth Day. The most recent one will take place in the year of 2022 in Lisbon, Portugal. Fratelli e sorelle, alle 21.37 il nostro amatissimo Santo Padre Giovanni Paolo II è tornato alla casa del Padre. Preghiamo per lui. Pope John Paul II died on April 2005 at age of 84. The Pope had suffered worsening health problems including heart condition. Many thousands of people gather in St. Peter's Square and in various other places around the world to pay tribute to the pontiff. During his funeral, almost 200 countries expressed interest in taking part. The public chanted Santo Subito, Saint to now, demanding his quick canonization that took place in 2014. It was the fastest such a process in modern history. It's been 15 years since Jean Paul II passed away. The Pope left behind the legacy that still applies today. 
For instance, the relations between Catholic Church and other religions seems to be stronger. The Wolf Youth Day is still popular. In Poland, Jean Paul II is treated as a national hero, and as a result, the Polish Parliament established the year of 2020 as the year of Saint Jean Paul II. Meanwhile, many Polish streets, churches, as well as the airport, like in Krakow, were named after the Pope. But in contrast to that, the pedophilia crisis is still problematic. Various media institutions around the globe are talking that the Vatican swept the issue under the rug. Does it mean that Jean Paul II knew what was going on and didn't take any actions? Or he did react, but didn't want to inform the media to avoid the crisis inside the church? In spite of this, this year there will be 100th birthday anniversary of the Polish Pope. What would we wish for if he was alive? Na pewno życzyłby światu pokoju, sprawiedliwości, solidarności, oczywiście równych praw ludzi indywidualnych i prawa narodów. If John Paul II had lived to be 100, his wish would be to do exactly what he'd been doing before, just deeper, longer and better. Every good human being would uh, wish for um, a peaceful, loving, caring, uh, compassionate, affectionate society.